famished. I've had supper for two weeks. Well, I'll be glad to give you some money for food. Can't keep food down. Never could. I'll do anything I can to help you. Anything? Oh, thank you. May I be permitted to introduce myself? My name is Aramis. I am a vampire. Oh, but of course you know that. I say, what happened to your fangs? Oh, they're retractable when not in use. Oh, it's all right. I didn't bite deep. You won't become one of us. It was the best blood I have ever tasted. <laughs> And from such a noble source. You are the great R. Chetwind Hayes, the writer of those magnificent horror stories. You are my favorite author. I wouldn't have thought you needed to read horror stories. Oh, my dear sir, you do yourself an injustice. Everybody likes to read about themselves and their own kind. Yes, well, I'm glad you've been of help to you. I'm glad you like my blood, uh, my books, but I must be on my way. Oh, no, I can't hear of such a thing. You want more of my blood? No, 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 you misunderstand me. I owe you something. I want to help you, to repay you. You know, it's quite all right, thank you very much. I'm glad you've been of service. Well, I can get you material for your next book. Material? What sort of material? I will take you to a place where my friends foregather. There are vampires, werewolves, ghouls, every kind of monster you could ever imagine, and some far beyond the imagining of mere mortals. There you will find stories of such blood-curdling terror that it will make your toes curl and your hair reach up towards the sky. Where is this place? It's just a short distance. It's called the uh, Monster Club. Every night on the streets When all the people are fast asleep From every corner creeps The shape of something you Type B is off. And I'll have to make do with that common typo. <laughs> if I may suggest, sir, tomato juice will look less conspicuous. Dr. Frankenstein 
these creations A good looking in a monster nation Mr. Wheelwolf wants to meet you He's waiting for the moon to greet you Sister Snake with a poison touch Wants to catch you in a midnight crush Got a friend you know you can trust He's a fiend and he's one of us This is pleasant enough, but it doesn't sustain us. But to get real nourishment, we have to take our food directly from the source. <laughs> and it becomes more difficult constantly. People are so well educated these days. It's all those horror films and television. Everybody knows about garlic and steaks through the heart. Yes, we all have our cross to bear. I'd rather you didn't use that word. What's this? Oh, that's a monster's genealogical chart. You see, first we have the primate monsters, vampires, werewolves, and ghouls. Now, a vampire and a werewolf would produce a weir vamp. But a werewolf and a ghoul would produce a weir goo. But a vampire and a ghoul would produce a vam goo. A weir goo and a weir vamp would produce a shaddy. Now, a weir goo and a vam goo would produce a maddy, but a weir vamp and a vam goo would produce a ratty. Now, if a shaddy were to mate with a ratty or a maddy, the results would be a muck. A muck? Frankly, that's just the polite name for a mongrel. <laughs> you know, it's, it's quite simple, really. All you have to do is remember the basic rules of monsterdom. Vampires sup, werewolves hunt, ghouls tear. Shaddies lick, maddies yawn, mocks blow, but shad mocks only whistle. Shad mocks? If a mock were to mate with any of the other hybrids, their offsprings would be called shad mocks. And they only whistle. Well, they don't do it very often. Doesn't sound too terrifying. Oh, but you should see the results of a shad mocks whistling. Shad mocks are the lowest in the monster hierarchy. Yet they have this power. What happens when a shadlock whistles? I heard of a man once who saw the results of a shadlock's whistle. That's all he saw. And yet, and yet. He's been like that for the past six months. If we only knew what was going on behind those staring eyes, we might be able to help him. He was found under extraordinary and inexplicable circumstances. Anything? Nothing of use to us. Maybe we ought to look at proper jobs. And be slaves all our lives. No, what we need is a big one. Just one big break. Someone we can take for all his work. With enough money, we might even get married. Oh, no, here's something. Antiquary requires secretary to help catalogue collection and prepare a new book. Some of those old fools have got stuff that's worth thousands. Gold melted down, untraceable. Not very likely. He's offering enough money. Hmm. Our brick house.
I'm Angela. Angela Jones, I wrote to you about your advertisement. Yes, of course, please do, do come in. My study is this way. So many things. They all have to be catalogued. Before we begin, there's something I must tell you. Some people find me difficult. I'm I impossible to work for. Why? Did you beat up your secretaries? No, nothing like that. I, I, I pride myself on being a very easy taskmaster. It's just... <laughs> Do it. Oh, did he turn you down? He wanted me all right. And the house is full of good stuff. But the way he looked, there was something terrifying about him. Full of good stuff? I'm not going back. someone to clean this place. I can't. I, I, I can't ask people to come here. You've no idea how hard it was for me to, to advertise for you. Why? I must never go near people. I, I can never go outside these grounds. Aren't you ever lonely? If only you knew the agony of my loneliness. Some of my relations visit me from time to time, but they're different. But why can't you go out? Well, there's all the noise, the, the traffic. I might. You might what? My only friends. Soon they'll, they'll learn to get to know you. Soon they'll accept you as a friend. Well, I must get to work. I've always been fascinated by the things of the dead. probably something to do with my ancestry. And then the living have always... I used to wear a mask once. But it was no use. It just made people curious. They had to see what was underneath, and then... It's much better to get over the shock right at the beginning. Then they might even grow accustomed...
should always have flowers. Masses of flowers. You should always be surrounded with flowers. The birds will expect their breakfast. Yes, yes, you're right. I mustn't neglect my other friends. No idea what meeting you has meant. What are you playing at? What's going on? Let's forget it. Chuck the whole thing in. You're afraid of him? You said yourself he was a weakling. What can he do? I don't know. At least get hold of something. So I can see what sort of stuff he's got. Get it valued. I don't like it. You in love with him or something? No. He terrifies me. This sort of stuff's almost impossible to fence. It's too specialised, and we need a ton of it for the Meltdown Valley to be worth anything at all. So we give up? No. We've invested too much to chuck it in now. But if it's no use... He almost certainly pays for that stuff in cash. He must have a safe somewhere to keep it handy. Probably keep some of the small, really valuable articles in there, too. Has he come out of his room yet? I haven't seen him for days. Good. Then you'll have plenty of opportunity to look for the safe.
Angela, look. It used to belong to Princess Sahoya. She was said to be the most beautiful woman of her day. That was some 3,000 years ago. Sahoya must have had your colouring. It matches your eyes, your skin. all those things in the bank. I, I don't like banks. You have to see people. No, my things are much better here with me. Angela, will you marry me? I realize my appearance and everything. But you could still love me. But we've got it all planned. I can't do it to him. Look, don't worry. Everything will be all right. Just remember the plan. Play along with him. Get him to give you the ring as an engagement present, and then remember the combination when he opens the safe. Oh, you've made me so very, very happy. Of course you may have the ring. It's only fitting it should adorn a, a living hand after so many centuries. And such a, a beautiful hand. I... I have something of a confession I must make to you. I am a... a, a Shadmok. I don't suppose you know what that is. If I ever whistle... Well... I must never whistle. No matter what happens. You must meet some of my relations. They can explain the situation to you much better than I ever can. We can have a party. An engagement party. It can be in fancy dress. Everyone can wear masks. My relations are a bit much to take all at once. That way you can have a chance to get used to them gradually. I like dressing up. Well, in spite of my relations, in spite of everything, you could still love me. All be masked. Present my great uncle Uriah. Great uncle, may I present my bride to be, Miss Angela Jones.
the money and the other things that don't matter to me. Take them. Do what you want with them. Give them to whomsoever you please. But you could still love me. Oh, Philip. Oh no. Don't touch me. That's all I ever wanted from you. Don't say that. You mustn't say that. I could never love you. You're horrible. No. Horrible. <laughs> There's nothing sadder than the agonized grief of a tender-hearted monster. They're playing my song. Hey, fix me a drink and make it a Bloody Mary. Don't forget to spike it. Play my favorite record. You're so vain. You come from Pennsylvania. I'm from Transylvania, and I'm a pain in the neck. She's the kind of girl to drive a man insane. Think I love her so, and I give her pain. You can call it fate. She's the one I rate. She's just the kind of girl I love to hunt to rape. When I kiss and I find a hand, like making love.
club circuit. Well, aren't they all? It's a great honor for me to be invited here tonight to show you an excerpt from my latest film. It is, I assure you, a picture very close to my heart, for it's based on my own childhood, but in a modern setting. Lower budget. I was born and brought up here in London. I can't say I um, ever felt the urge to follow in my father's profession. You see, he was a night worker and spent the daylight hours asleep. He needed peace and quiet. But as a naturally shy child, I too was glad we lived in a secluded house and avoided our neighbors. But even the shyest children must go to school. My mother, may the earth lay lightly on her bones, was always determined that I should look my best. Now remember what I've told you. Never speak to strangers. I'll remember. Now, Manfred, you must hurry, or you'll miss the 5.30 from Oxford Circus. Oh, oh yes, you're, you're quite right, my dear. Your business is so messy, I shouldn't like to think of you being mistaken for a butcher. Daddy, I wish you could play with me during the day. <laughs> no, I work during the night. I must get my sleep. Are you a waiter? Oh, <laughs> no, my son, I am not a waiter. Uh, but I suppose I do have something to do with the food trade. What do you do? I uh, lighten the burden of those who have too much and receive certain nutritional benefits in return. A uh, nip and a suck, <laughs> and they never feel a thing. Feed without greed. That has always been my slogan. 
The rush out trains and the after theater crowds provide a rich harvest uh, for someone who knows his business. <laughs> but I must always be on the lookout for the Lini, the bee squad. Beware of men carrying violin cases. I do not think, dear, there is any need to reveal the problems of your profession. You are right, dear. A gentleman does not mix his business and home life. Sufficient for Linton to know that he has an unusual father. Who loves his <laughs> family very much. <laughs> mustn't worry about those horrid children teasing you. You see, you must remember that you are better than they are. Back in the old country, where we came from, your father was a nobleman. He's a count. Which means, of course, that I am a, a countess. Well, then you must be a viscount. Children, what's going on here? Oh, come on, I'll, uh, I'll uh, walk home with you and see that they don't harm you. Merciful heavens, why not? My mother told me never to speak to strangers. But I'm not a stranger. I'm a clergyman. Would you like a caramel? No, thank you. I can't let anyone come to my home. Why not? I don't know. There must be a reason. I think my father escaped from somewhere in the middle of Europe. Perhaps he's hiding. Why were those limbs of Satan so angry with you? I said I was a Viscount. Mm. 
Is your father a nobleman? I hardly see my father. He sleeps all day and goes out at night. Where does he sleep? Downstairs. I've never been there. Why don't you go down there one day? He might wake up early and play with you. Wait till your mother goes out, then she needn't know. <laughs> I'm just going to the shops, Linton. Now you remember not to let anyone in while I'm away. I remember. Your father. Leave me alone. Where is your father? Come on. Who are you? What do you want? We are the B Squad, Sonny. The Blini. Special branch concerned with blood crimes. 
We have sworn to eradicate the curse of vampirism from this land. Sir, it is getting dark. The boy said his father slept downstairs. Look for a cellar. Your father has been the most difficult case of my career. I've hunted him for months. He's been clever, very clever. But now I've got him. Sir! No, you can't go down there, you can't! Take him down! He should witness the end. And they'll get an ambulance. <laughs> You'll need more than an ambulance. My husband didn't just take a trickle of refreshment. He bit deep. Do you know what that means? You are one of his kind now. You will have to be staked by your own men. She's right, sir. The virus is in you. Come moonlight, you'll be on the rampage. We'll have to do our duty, sir. You can't mean that, Sergeant. <laughs> you are talking to Pickering, a departmental legend, head of the Bleeny. Why, I've staked over 2,000 vamps. You can't mean to... Oh. Oh. Sir, you wouldn't want us chasing you through the underground, sir? Wouldn't be respectful, sir. Now, if you could just see your way to laying out nice and flat like, well, there'll be old doings through your ticker in the jiffy. Where would you be most comfortable, sir? Now! <laughs> Watson.
thick proof press <laughs> filled with tomato ketchup. <laughs> The one thing you must learn in life, my darlings, is cannot be too careful. Hmm? <laughs> oh, what a happy family. <laughs> Well, thank you for a very pleasant evening. I really must go. The entertainment is about to commence.
That girl there at the bottom of the chart. Surely she's not a monster. Well, no, that's a human. A cross between a ghoul and a human being. As well as mating with each other, monsters can also mate with human beings. The results are nearly always disastrous. But they will do it. What do they do? Do? Well, do they whistle or anything like that? Hume goes evil. Hell no. Apart from an unfortunate appetite for carrion, which they get from the ghoul side of the family, they don't do anything interesting. <laughs> I'm relieved to hear it. Oh, but their relations do have some fascinating habits. One of them told me an intriguing story once. It started with... You shall see. You shall see. Again. Oh, no, 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 no. It's a wrap. Right, it's a wrap, everyone. Pass light. I want you to print 3, 11, and 13. I suppose I'll have to sort the whole mess out in the cutting room as usual. Ah, Sam, can you have a look at these pictures of the new locations that we've found? <sighs> Where have you looked? Here, here, and here. Well, what's wrong with this area? It looks far more remote, far more promising. I want a strange, eerie, lonely, half-deserted village in which to make an atmospheric horror film. Now, do you really expect to find such a place surrounded by a motorway, a power station, and a group of five-star hotels? I'll go out this weekend I'll find the place myself.
here. Innkeeper. Oh. I'd like to use your telephone. No telephone here. Well, perhaps you could help me. You see, I'd like to use this village for a film. A film for the cinema. But whose permission do I need? Who runs things around here? Around things? The elders. How do I contact them? They'll be here soon. Don't worry about it. You see, I'll have my production office sorted all out. I'll talk to my art director when I get back to London tonight. You not get there tonight. Too far. Not safe go at night. You stay here. to the nearest garage. Garage? No garage. Well, surely you can suggest something. It'll soon be dark. It ain't safe in dark. Stay here in park. Dada say you eat this. What is it? Rabbit stew. I cook. What's your name? Name? You mean how am I called? Yeah. Luna. Dada is keeper of inn. Outside, wear clothes like yours. Outside? We're only a couple of miles from the main highway. An hour in my car would take it to a big city. These only clothes we have. Only clothes in boxes. No clothes like yours. Boxes? All come from boxes. 
They can work with hands to make that from boxes. Well, where do you people get these boxes? In ground. On gathering night, all come from boxes. Clothes, wood, food, all from boxes. No more boxes left now. All gone. I not like others. I Hyungu. My mother from outside. When I born, she be put into box. Then dug up for great eating. Dada say she caught in mist, like you and motor car. No, no. What are they gonna do with me? Tell me what they're going to do with me. Tell Dada beat me if I Tell me I'm not going to let you go until you do. We must have our food. Almighty God, hear the prayer of your miserable servant and grant me the power to set down the unthinkable evil I have witnessed. We should have destroyed the first one, crushed it underfoot, burnt its foul carcass and tossed the ashes to the winds as it squatted behind a tombstone and did gibber upon us. But I, may I be forgiven, did implore mercy for the creature. I took it into my house and washed away the filth, filth the like of which I had never before in my life beheld. I clad it in clean raiment and laid it on a soft bed. Where did I sin, merciful God? For should we not succor the afflicted, give good for evil? Then one night when the moon was full, I saw it. Cursed be the eyes that see, the ears that hear, feeding in the churchyard. Mud on the hands, sitting on a pile of earth and gnawing, gnawing. We chased it away, but for the one we drove away, twelve did return, and they danced around the village bounds to mark the place for their own. I write, 
I can hear the howls. To beat me because I help you. I not go back. If you go, you'll not be left here. That's nonsense. When I escape, I want you to go with me and live the life a pretty girl should. You take me outside. I wear clothes like yours. Underground? Underground? What do you know about the underground? The elders say there is much good eating underground. <laughs> to come for great eating. Elders not like us have much wisdom. No escape when elders are here. When will they come? This night.
broke. Like when Dada hit Rabbit. Rabbit dies soon when back broke. I die soon. Never see outside. Never wear pretty clothes. I'll go and get some help. You'll be all right. There's a village. There's a village up there. A village of... Well, look, if you'll take me to the police station... Where are you going? This is the way to the... Stop! Don't worry, sir. We saw. The supply wagon will take care of it. Supply wagon? It's just behind that car. You see, we always give the elders a police escort when they return to Loughborough. Monsters? Well, it would make a good story, wouldn't it? I mean, it's so moral. No nudity, no sex. A little violence, perhaps. <laughs> now, really, I must go. Oh, no. No, I, I, I've taken a liking to you. But you promised. Oh, no, no, no. I'm going to put you up for membership. But I'm not a monster. Nonsense. You're the greatest monster of them all. Uh, oh, Mr. Club Secretary, I want to propose my friend here as a member of this August Assembly. But he's a... He's a human! Yes. But can we truly call this a monster club if we do not boast amongst our membership a single member of the human race? Nonsense! What can he do? What can he do? In the past 60 years, Humes have exterminated over 150 million of their own kind. No effort has been spared to reach this astronomical figure, and the methods that they have used must demand our unstinted admiration. You know, Humes began with certain very serious disadvantages, but these they overcame with wonderful ingenuity. Not having a fang or a claw, oh, 
<laughs> or even a whistle worth talking about. They invented guns and tanks and bombs and aeroplanes and extermination camps and poison gas and daggers and swords and bayonets and booby traps and atomic bombs and flying missiles, submarines, warships, aircraft carriers, and motor cars. They have even perfected a process whereby they can spread a lethal disease on any part of this planet. Not to say anything about nuclear power. <laughs> oh, during their short history, you know, humes have subjected other humes to death by burning, hanging, decapitation, strangulation, electrocution, shooting, drowning, crushing, racking, disemboweling, <laughs> and other methods far, far too revolting for the delicate stomachs of this August descent. I never realized she was so talented. We don't like to boast. I second the proposal. A member of such a talented race can only be a credit to any monster club. Maestro, to celebrate the installation of a new member, May we hear our song. About the things that chill the human heart I was necking with my girlfriend When she just stepped out the light Saying thanks for the memory As she took a big bite And there's the blood, blood. Welcome to the Monster Club Welcome to the Monster Club you hear those happy footsteps follow you down the hall As you open the door to your late night visitor You really lose your cool Whoa. When he borrows a spanner to tighten his bows You feel such a fool in this club Circumstances
vampire girl. 